my dear students welcome to my channel learning hub so agenda of this video is uh, keyword arguments and variable length arguments we already covered positional and default argument now we will move ahead with keyword argument and variable length argument now keyword argument is used suppose you must have seen default argument default argument should be at the last means suppose if we are defining any function a so we have to use it like this if we are writing a is equal to 10 b c this is wrong so it should be at the last so and secondly position always matters suppose in this case p r t so first will be always principal r will be always rate and t will be always time if we are calculating simple interest and we, if we want to call this function, we are writing simple interest 1000, suppose rate is 2 and time is 2. So, in this case, the position of principal 2 and 2 matters. If we are changing the position, means if we are making it 2 and 1000, then what will happen? 2 will go to P. 1000 will go to R and this 2 will go to time. Similarly, same thing happen in default argument that position matters. So, if we are not able to remember what is the sequence of the R parameters in the function and so it will be difficult for us to send the arguments. So, what we can do is we will use this keyword argument. So, in this case, the name which are giving initially in both these default and positional, no matter whatever arguments, whatever name we are giving in parameter, it can differ from argument. It doesn't matter if we are writing P or R or principal or rate or time. Means, if these two doesn't match, does it, it's okay. But in case of keyword argument, whatever name we are using in parameter and whatever name we are using in argument it should be same so what will this program will start executing from here so we are calling this function here this is known as keyword arguments see here we have specified the name of argument p in this case the value 1000 will go to p the value 2 will go to 2 and value 3 will go to T. So, so uh, according to the keyword, the values are being transferred. Similarly, if we are changing the sequence, means first rate, that is R. In this case, R will go to this R, not P. See, the difference, if we are using default argument or positional argument, the first argument should go to first parameter. But in case of keyword argument, it will see the name of keyword and the value will go to R. T will go to T and 1000 will go to P. Similarly, now suppose you can see the third statement in which we are making a function call. R will go to 3, P will go to P, but there is no T. Now, if T is not there, arguments and parameter doesn't match, it will generate an error. So, in this case, if we want, we can use default argument also. Suppose we are not providing anything, so obviously T will be taken as 3. Now, it will not generate an error. Now, next, next argument is variable length argument. Variable length argument is used when we don't know how many arguments we are going to send. See, when number of arguments are not fixed, we use variable length argument. So, I will take one example now. So, this is an example of variable length argument. In very, whenever we are using variable length argument, while defining a parameter, we have to use star sign. Star sign means that it is variable length. Means the length doesn't, length of parameters or length of arguments are not fixed. We can send zero argument, we can send one argument, two argument, four, eight, ten, whatever. So, it is not fixed. So, we can send zero argument also. So, when whatever we are sending from, uh, whatever arguments we are sending, that will be converted to a tuple. When we are sending this blank, blank means zero argument. So, 
it will come here n will have nothing 0 and n is a tuple now n will become empty tuple when n will become empty tuple and we are trying to access its element it will print nothing in second statement when we are sending one argument n will contain one so n will contain one tuple that is only one value in the tuple and when it for i in n this for loop will access each and every element of tuple one by one so in this case it will print the output will be one when we go to third statement number of arguments are four one two three and four so n will contain in this case n will contain a tuple of four elements so for i in l means it is accessing each and every element of the tuple and it will print it so output will be 1 2 3 and 4 when we are trying when we are sending uh, this is another statement with exactly four arguments and we are sending it and then we are trying to print it so it will print 6 8 9 and 3 so Variable length arguments are used when number of arguments or parameters we are sending are not sending are not fixed. Now I will demonstrate both these arguments on my laptop. So this is a program to demonstrate keyword arguments. So we have used a function that is to calculate compound interest. So the first parameter in this is R then P and then T. That is first of all I want to rate then principal, then time. But with keyword arguments, we can change the sequence. Here we are using, see, we are, I am sending T as 6, means time as 6 first, then principal as 1000 and rate as 2. So when we will run this program, first I will close the output window. So now you can see here, the amount is this and interest is this now i'll change the position if i am changing the position then also you can see here if i am changing the position that is first principal then principal then time then rate still the output will be same you can see both the outputs both the outputs are same now with keyword arguments if we want we can use default arguments also default arguments means if we are not sending any argument that particular parameter will take the default argument so in this case in second i'll just make it comment so we will execute this function call now and this is using default parameter so principal will be 1000 rate will be 2 and time will be 3 years so function f5 you can see you will get the output if we are using you can see the difference if we are writing here 3 means if we are sending the time 3 then also the output will be same in both the cases you can see the same output in both the cases so now if the arguments and parameter doesn't match in that case it will generate an error suppose here we are taking only two parameters and we are sending three in this case it will generate an error you can see the error i'll just run it again function f5 arguments and parameter function call compound interest you can see here so it will generate an error this is a program to demonstrate variable length arguments so variable length arguments are used when we uh, we don't know how many arguments we are going to send so in this case suppose i have made a function call the execution will start from here and I am sending function 4 means I am sending only one argument. So in this case n will be a tuple of only one, one value that is 4. 
when we will use for loop to access each and every element only four will be printed now in second case when we are calling without any argument obviously n will be empty tuple so whatever arguments we are sending that will be convert to a tuple in third case when we are sending you can see here in third case when we are sending 1 2 3 4 four arguments in that case it will create a tuple of four values i'll just run this program you can see in first case it will print four if i am trying to print print suppose in that is it should print a tuple so function f5 you can see here it is printing a tuple and then the value in tuple then in when we are sending in this function call when we are not sending anything it will print empty tuple then no values will be printed in third case when we are sending a uh, one two three four that is four values in that case the tuple will be one two three four and the output will be each and every element will be printed one by one now one more thing we can send list also as an argument if we are passing list as an argument so suppose the list is l1 and we want to send this list so the function called pass list l1 so l1 will go to l in this case l will contain a list now which have four elements the elements are four five two and three now if we are trying to print the list so directly we can access transfers the list and print each and every element of the list you can see the output printing list and in this way we can send list also so my dear students i hope you understood the concept if you like this video please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon thank you and have a nice day